Welcome back to Sip the Tell the Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today I want to talk to you about the four things that came across my desk in the last 24 hours. First things first, the Panthers have requested to interview Mike McDonald and Todd Munkin for their head coaching vacancies. vacancies. Now, we've known over the past couple of days that Todd Munkin and Mike McDonald have been requested to interview for a number of head coaching positions. Uh, it's just funny that the Panthers have inquired both of them for their head coaching position. So how funny is it that when they go back to work, uh, in fact, today or tomorrow, and they look at each other like, how'd your interview go? How'd your interview go? Mm, went all right. Mine nah, went all right. <laughs> Knowing both of them lying their ass off, <laughs> talking to each other. So, uh, that would be a funny thing. But just wanted to throw a few numbers out there to kind of give you context as to why both guys are getting the opportunities they are. Obviously, the Ravens had the best record in the NFL. But statistically, looking at each side of the ball, just wanted to throw a few numbers out there. Um, Todd Monkey. Talk about the offensive numbers. Yards per game this year. Ravens offense was sixth with 170.4 yards per game. Rushing yards per game, they were first, 156 yards per game. 156.5 yards per game. Passing yards per game, we were 21st with 213.8 yards per game. Points per game, we were fourth at 28.4. Another reason, Lamar potentially could be the MVP. Uh, we were still first in, pass, uh, first in rushing yards, and we were first with Greg Roman. But I will say this, the rushing yards we got this year, they were a lot easier. We had a lot easier rushing lanes to run with because we were spread out. There were not 3,500 people in the box, so the, the yards that were got – by the running backs and Lamar, there were not so many grind them out tough yards. There were huge rushing opportunities. There were way more explosive runs than there were grind out yards. So whereas Keaton Mitchell, like on some of his big plays, he would have eight carries for 70 so yards, eight carries with on the Greg Roman may get you 15 yards. And that's the huge difference. And then talking about Mike McDonald, some of the stats for the defense. I got my little notes in front of me. That's why you see the paper keeps flailing. Um, <laughs> six in total yards per game, 301 yards. 14 in rushing yards per game, 109.4. 21st in uh, passing yards per game, 191.4. But those don't really compare as to these next three um, stats. And everybody knows these next three stats because they were on the Baltimore Ravens website a couple of days ago. First in takeaways, 31. First in sacks, 60. First in scoring defense, 16.5. That's why Mike McDonald is getting all these opportunities. That's why Todd Munkin is getting all the opportunities he's getting. Because even though some categories don't really say, hey, we're the best or whatnot, or whatnot that's the overall improvement and the way the Ravens have been play, playing and have led them to be to have the best record in the NFL. That's why they're getting all these opportunities to be head coaches. Now, I do want to ask you this question, and you can answer this question in the comment section. Do you think the fact that Munkin and McDonald getting all these job interview requests is taking away from their preparation for the playoff game? It's just a random question. I'm not saying it is. I'm just asking you guys' opinions. Do you think that it's taken away from their – preparation or is it okay because we actually don't have a game this week if this was next week it'd be different and and i think their interviews probably will stop once we find an opponent once we have an opponent set up that's my opinion but answer that question in the comment section the second thing michael pierce signed a two-year extension the other day to stay with the baltimore ravens which in my eyes makes it harder i think for them to re-sign matt bk because you already signed brought to washington Travis, Wash Travis Jones is on the contract. Now you re-sign Michael Pierce. I, I, I know Matt BK has, a, has, 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 has had a stellar year with his sacks, but you got three D tackles on the contract, and, it's, and you're looking at one that's going to have a mega contract coming up. Is he going to be the re-signed? But let's talk about, you know, impact from Michael Pierce. He had 42 tackles, one sack. Two TFLs, three quarterback hits, two passes defended, one forced fumble, two forced re fumbles recovered, uh, and multiple guards and centers destroyed during the season. And what I mean by that is if you go back and look at some um, tape on Michael Pierce 
and there's no stat for what I'm finna talk about. There are a number of times where he just took the guard or the center and just replaced or displaced the line of scrimmage. It's a uh, one of my former head coach, the last guy I worked for, he had this term he called block destruction. And that is what Michael Pierce does. He destroys blocks. Now, he don't make a lot of tackles, but he will take the center of the guard and just push them back, which allows other guys to make tackles. And this was a key signing for Roquan and whoever his running mate is going forward, whether it's Patrick Queen, whether it's Trent Simpson, whether it's somebody else that we don't know about. So sign, re-signing Mike Pierce, which this will probably be Mike Pierce's last contract, but re-signing him is going to be key for Roquan and whoever his running mate is going forward. All right, the third thing that came across my desk, Lamar Jackson was named the AFC Player of the Month for December. And here's some numbers for the month of December for Lamar Jackson. 79 for 123, 79 of 123. 1,060 passing yards, 11 touchdowns to only two interceptions, 247 rushing yards. He had that perfect passer rating versus the Dolphins in week 17 and just a number of other wild plays. Uh, he deserved the AFC player, not the AFC, yeah, the AFC player of the month. And I think that month solidified him winning the MVP. Me personally think he should get it. Uh, there are a lot of guys you know, that week 18, the, the Cowboys tried to win it for Dak, leaving him in the game that was obviously out of hand. Um, Tua led the league in passing. Uh, Brock Purdy's name still is floating out there. But I think Lamar Jackson is the MVP of the league, and him winning the AFC Player of the Month, to me, solidifies that. And there'll be people out there that still say he don't have the numbers to do it, but valuable, Lamar Jackson. All right, and the last thing that came across my desk I want to talk about today uh, and this came from Pro Football Reference, a tweet, and I really wasn't even – I was looking for stuff to talk about, but this came from a different source that I normally get my information from. I was just scrolling and saw this on Twitter. From Pro Football Reference, the Ravens beat 10 teams or better with a 500 or better record. And according to Pro Football Reference, this is the most ever. So what I did was I went to the Ravens record, and I wrote down all the teams they beat with a 500 or, more, or, 500 or better record. Now, it may be more than 10 that I got on this list that I'm going to name to you, but some teams are on there twice. So let me count them real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I got 15. I got 15. And that should not be right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I got 14. I have 14. And so how many wins did we have? We had 14 wins, if not mistaken. But this is what I got. I got the Texans, the Bengals, Colts, Browns, Steelers, Lions, Seahawks, Rams, Jags, 49ers, Dolphins. Oh, no, I should, the Steelers should not be on here. That's what, that's what I did. I messed up. I shouldn't have put the Steelers on here. My bad. We didn't beat the Steelers. So it's Texans, Bengals, Colts, Browns, Lions, Seahawks. Browns, Bengals, Bengals should be on here twice. Rams, Jags, 49ers, Dolphins. That's what it is. I messed up and I put the Steelers on here. That's what it is. So that's the list. Uh, and according to Pro Football Reference, them beating 10 teams with over 500 records is the most ever done. Whereas when you look at the Dolphins, they only beat one team that had over 500 record, and that was the Cowboys. So not only did we have a darn good team, Statistically, we had probably one of the best teams and probably one of the hardest schedules ever. So with that being said, this is what I have for you on January 12th, 2024. I want to say thank you to everybody that subscribed to the Patreon. I put some of that to use today. Uh, I think it's going to help us going forward to help me bring you better quality content. Uh, thank you to everybody out there. I appreciate it. I have a newfound focus with some stuff that went on here lately. And um, <laughs> just know. Just know the grind is, is, is going to be real. It's going to be real. And I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love. Coach Evans out.